the talker, the big talker from the weekend, those things, the red and the yellow that really dominated play. JK, I know you've got plenty to say on this one. Absolutely ridiculous. I did not sleep when I got home. I was so angry about it. Why, uh, and it's not the ref's fault, right? Not the ref's fault. Mitigating factors, do we know what they are? The, the player sort of bending. So with, with the offer red card, I believe that there were mitigating factors. But the referee had put himself into switching. So Swinton actually, you know, all of a sudden is red carded. I believe they're both yellows. But the problem is with world rugby is pre the last World Cup Mills, they started going on about headshots and blah, blah, blah. Early in the competition, too many red cards, so they changed it again. Our game does not need red cards. I don't think there's anyone in our game that goes out intentionally to hurt someone. So we, if it's red card, they go off and someone replaces them in 15 minutes. People have paid good money to watch a game of rugby with 15 aside. So that's my biggest issue. World rugby are always retrospectively saying we're going to look at it. I heard, I heard through the grapevine, because I can't tell you where I heard it, but apparently they're going to re-look at it. Are we always going to re-look at the stuff post? Mm. If you know there's no red cards, this guy's now got, what, he get six weeks? Five. Yeah, yeah. So he's, yeah. He, he's not playing again until February the 6th. And, and I he's thought, got carded, and now he's faced a judiciary, and he's got more time. Is that fair? It's and Mills, like double punishment. Yeah, Mills, I don't know what you think, but I thought there was more, it was more malicious, the second one, mm. than Offers one. But yeah. I still think they're both... Yeah, well, and, and it's interesting also that you say, you know, they're actually looking at it now. I hope they don't just look at it. They actually do something about it. I think it's it's ruined the game. It ruined, you know, offer coming coming off. Why didn't they adopt what we did in Super Rugby Aotearoa, where you you know perhaps get went off for 20 minutes, but it not always ruined the, the game. But it's sort of another guy had to come off. You know, uh, Kira Ioane. Mm. Oh he yeah. He had to come off because of someone else's wrongdoing. So I don't know about you, Eloise. I, don't, I wouldn't imagine you'd be dropping the shoulder anytime soon after seeing that sort of stuff. <laughs> but right? as a player, Eloise, that must really hurt. You know, you see Akira, as Mill said, walking off, and his moment is robbed. Yeah, it's definitely tough for Akira debut, and then he. You know, has to go spend the rest of the game on the bench. I agree, JK. I think probably getting rid of the red card, especially at test match level, like it just, especially for offer, front rower, you need them for scrums. They say the worst thing for rugby is slow motion, <laughs> right? <laughs> mm. It was all right in my day because we all went in slow motion. I mean, but, the 8,000 replays that we saw in slow motion. But the interesting yeah. thing, and you're, and you're an, an elite mm. athlete, what the people don't realise is once offer's committed to that, and he actually, from a tackle technique, looked pretty good. Yeah. It, like, it happened so fast, very hard. Have you found yourself in situations like that where you might have got away with it, but it was no-one's fault just because there's a bit of movement in the last minute? Yeah, definitely. And, like, he's a big guy, and you can definitely see him dipping to, um, to make that tackle. And, yeah, the, the Aussie winger there, he, he flips and... Yeah, it just happens to So is it fair to say you yeah. can't have parity in red cards? Because Ian Foster has said that there are two very different tackles with two red cards in the game. Mm. Completely different. You don't need parity because you don't need red cards. So what do right? you do? What's, what's you the put them on the report. This is, this is what really annoys me about world rugby. Make some decisions for the entertainment of the game, for the fan, put people on, on report or replace them. We've got to start doing that. After 15 minutes, and I think Steve Hansen might have mentioned this a couple of years ago, and World Rugby said no. Why, why no? What, what, should they give 10% uh, of the money back for the people that paid to go yeah. and watch tickets? It, 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 no one wins in that instance, did they? Here's the other thing too. If there was a dangerous connection with the head, why were they not forced to have HIA tests? Exactly. Mm. And, and that's the problem. So let's leave the rest alone. And, you know, if I think a ref hasn't done well, I'll, I'll say so because they're like the players, they're, they're, they're professionals and, you know, they, they should be open for scrutiny. But it's not his fault. He is following a protocol. I believe that the protocols are wrong. We've okay. got to change them. So we need the IRB to relook at the framework. Is that what we're looking at? We need a re to rework the rules. Well, the, 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 what it was is that anything that hits the... the the head. It's a, it's a red card. It's an automatic red card. Now, there, there are two different tackles there, and there is a little bit of malice in it, but I, I still believe, I'm, I'm with you, I, don't, I, I think we get rid of the red cards and perhaps put them on report. You know, if we wait for it till later, or I take them off for 20, 20 minutes and then bring someone else back on. Something along, along those sort of lines, rather than having a, a, a sort of a, a thing in place where, you know, one team's down and automatically it just ruins, absolutely ruins the whole test match. From, from the, the time he pulls that red card out of his pocket, it's gone. We need a decision from World Rugby, but this century, 
<laughs> and not until something else happens where people, you know, lives are at stake, people's mm. uh, yeah. you know, salaries. There's a lot going on now in the professional sport. So you... I think rugby league does a way better job mm. at making quicker decisions. And when you say lives are at stake, JK, that's interesting, because Eloise, does that make you in practice and in training focus even more on your t tackle technique? It is that back on the radar after something like this? Yeah, definitely. And that's been a massive focus that's been forced out this last week in camp is around our body height. Yeah, we've got to get lower because we can't afford to be losing players like that. It's a fine line too. Like yeah. if you go too low, you, you, you're going to miss yeah. the ball and miss that that, that yeah. sort of physical sort of you know dominance that you're mm. trying to get that physical battle. So, I mean, you might as well start on your knees. You know, <laughs> then they can have offloads. I mean, that's that's probably where yeah. we're going to get to because yeah. you don't, I man, you don't want to be red carded for anything yeah. sort of that hits the chin, and that's why they need to reassess the the, the whole you know um you know the tackle, the high tackle um scenario. Totally, the protocols around high ball, right? So World Cup. The first test match where Geordie got taken out, that is a red card. But they gave him a yellow, which I think was common sense. Right? Mm -hmm. But if you went to the mitigating factors, it means that he should have been red carded. But he wasn't. It was, it was yellow. So, the, you know, the trouble is with common sense, it's not that common. <laughs> no. He's got a point. <laughs> JK has got a point there. 